so here we are continuing the series of Rahu in all 12 houses in your birth chart so uh, if you're new to my channel please subscribe hit the like button share with all your friends and family all right let's continue so if you are watching my previous uh, series of Rahu and the introduction of Rahu if you have watched that and you have seen the video about Rahu in the first house by now we all know that uh, Rahu is uh, a trickster Rahu is a chameleon Rahu is an amplifier like a, a like a planet which wherever it stays it amplifies the aspects and the effects of that house and with whichever planet uh, Rahu sits with it, it amplifies the results of that planet as well and Rahu is like a uh, it makes the person boastful and uh, shows like a person shows excessive pride now with Rahu in the second house what second house represents so the second house represents the family your family it represents your family lineage it represents your family history it represents your wealth your family the total combined family wealth it represents your family hoards uh, whatever like collections and like gems and jewelry of your family it represents like um, um, your savings like treasures of the family it represents the history of the family storage of the family it represents like a food items like a food you eat the second house it represents your speech uh, it represents like your mouth it represents your face like facial expressions um, it represents your eyes especially the right eye is seen by the second house so you know with the with Rahu in the second house so what do these people do so these people are uh, actually they're very uh, passionate about the collecting the family hoards like hoarding uh, they are very passionate about all these things related to the second house because Rahu is a very obsessive planet it wants to have more and more of everything and never satisfied about it um, so with this Rahu people are usually you know very passionate about uh, collecting things and uh, gems and jewelries and you will feel that with the second house Rahu people they feel that um, the family sometimes there because they also at the same time it's, it has a very um, a high impact Rahu effect on on their second house so what they feel is family is not telling the truth about the family history the family lineage or uh, you know they are not understanding about like where the family treasuries are uh, kept some things like related to that now with the second house also it is also about your second marriage so if you if your Rahu is placed in the second house that like itself it creates a circumstance that where you might have to end up marrying twice so you might have to marry the second time again because Rahu is like it warns it warns where it stays so it wants the uh, things related to that house so it may make a person marry the second time and uh, so it craves at the same time and uh, it wants to collect the um, treasures it wants like bankers you know bank people who are very good at banking um, uh, and those people are seen with Rahu in the second house like lots of banking professionals uh, who are very good at um, getting the um, bank a very good a kind of turnover um, annual turnover that is like those people are seen with Rahu in the second house and uh, they like to conserve uh, food money valuables and uh, with that also um, uh, so it can with as I said it also uh, signify the second like the right eye so things related to the right eye like um, you might have problems with the right eye so it's it might be that you both the eyes are like the your left eye has good eyesight but your right eye has that is the only eye that has uh, like weakness in it so another thing with the Rahu in the second house is uh, that uh, desirous Rahu it actually disguised uh, it is in actually is in a disguised form and uh, 
it uses its family history people with the rahu in the second house like what they do is they basically um they uses the uh, family history to uh, you know excel in their lives like they also sometimes lie about their family history um so they want to launch their uh, career by lying about their family history like um and then once their agenda is fulfilled they sometimes just forget about their family and they move on to a different platform um you know also with this kind of rahu sometimes um they boast about oh, well maybe their family is very wealthy which is not the true case so that is also can be seen with the rahu in the second house now so what these people basically do are like they initially they show off about their family and their family wealth and their family is like uh, sometimes you know these people you you see these people have lots of uh, you know like collections in the family like uh, antiques are seen with people who have rahu in the second house so what they do is like they boast about these things and then later on what they do is they usually deviate from their own family roots so they just leave their family sometimes uh, to get on on a higher stage in their life and they also may pretend to have been born in like very privileged families now born to accumulate wealth these these are the people who are like basically are born to accumulate wealth uh, obsessive at collecting things and uh, some people with very negative rahu in the second house they have uh, you know really bad habits of hoarding collecting things you know uh, if you have heard about people who just like keeps on buying stuff collecting stuff getting things and you know picking up from here and there like if they go to some friend's house they say well i like it if you can give it to me like they they bring things from different places and keep collecting them and uh, like just they hold on to unnecessary things which they don't even require in their home now again uh, so uh, you know people with uh, good banking skills uh, people with good like uh, if you see government officials like who are hired as treasurers those are seen uh, with the rahu in the second house the librarian like because it also represents a second house represents books and collection of books and collection of knowledge collection of history so librarians are seen from the uh, with this placement of rahu in the second house um then they are very good linguistics uh, uh, skills and uh, they are like actually they are the ones who have lots of knowledge base um in their like um if it it is related to history or if it related to anything any subject they have a good knowledge about the subjects uh, in uh, social like in which can be seen in like uh, in their social uh, interactions now um, they desire to gain fame um, through their family lineage and uh, through the method of like storytelling because a second house is uh, the house of speech so with speech they are very good storytellers um, they are very good at singing like singers can be seen with rahu in the second house and uh, of course like the other placements need to be seen with that uh, there has to be like the uh, good placement of sun and venus which gives you more artistic abilities um but rahu in the second house gives you a different tone of your voice so that is also like give you a different kind of um, uh, speech abilities and, uh, and so these people are very good at uh, like holding a good and wonderful speech um in in public now it as i said it is like the planet which which may, which can make someone speak and sing uh, with a very unusual and mesmerizing voice so people get really fascinated with their voice with people who have rahu in the second house so like you know those people like road, uh, radio jockeys are seen with rahu in the second house as well now it, at the same time um so they like to what they like to do is like they like to keep the company of the rich and the famous and the knowledgeable people like you must have seen in your friend circle some people say oh i only accompany like i only like to keep the company of 
um, people who are rich because uh, you know they say um, you are known by the company you keep right the man is known by the company they keep so that's how Rahu in the second house because they they are always um, the take the opportunity right they want to take the opportunity of their surroundings so they want to choose the surroundings very well now other things that Rahu in the second house can do is it can make because it also like if it is good it can make one a singer it can make one a very good speaker it can make one radio jockey and those kind of uh, positions but if uh, it is not well placed it is if it is placed in a difficult spot it can also make one stammer um, and then with this now Rahu is basically it is the reason why you are born you want to enjoy the the placement uh, of Rahu in this life so what it does is whichever house Rahu is placed in that is the house actually you are born to um, live the karma of that house right so what it does is like it is your past life's unfulfilled desires now in the second house because it is all related to wealth and accumulation of wealth the person feels that he wants to only earn money he wants to only earn wealth that is the only purpose they feel in their life so they can go anything do anything in their life to uh, fulfill that desire of themselves but at the same time if it can also make a person feel like very that they don't have money even if they have money they might sometimes have to live in very um, you know um, poverty state because that's what Rahu thing is right it is trying to teach you a lesson and it makes you feel that uh, you don't have enough right so that's how Rahu does its part here in the second house and uh, now but if Rahu is well placed in a uh, second house like let's say it's placed in the sign of cancer in the sign of Taurus in the sign of Aquarius and Libra so what it does is it promotes the prosperity of your second house and it can people with the Rahu well placed Rahu in second house they gain through legacies and they gain through inheritances they gain through their learning if they if they learn if they read books they can be very knowledgeable and actually people with Rahu in the second house are really really knowledgeable they want to acquire more and more knowledge um, so because anything is not enough for them and then comes um, uh, the part like uh, you know they also gain through properties like because second house and fourth house is property but a second house is joint property of the family so they also gain success through the properties of the family and then now here also like um, you know people with Rahu are usually what I would say is the, the, the other side like when it we talk about the face and facial expressions here people with Rahu are usually they usually have darker complexions uh, within their family lineage so they are the ones who would not be as like fear as other members of the family and uh, people with Rahu in the second house what Rahu does here it can make a person like a liar at the same time because when you speak and then there's a um, you know all the characteristics of Rahu are in place and if Rahu is placed in like a difficult um, sign and then having a you know malefic aspects further then it can make a person lie and people sometimes are very fierce fearless uh, with Rahu in the second house and sometimes it can bring about situations where, the, where you don't have any choice than to lie right so and then then other thing is like because it's the house of family and family lineage and Rahu in the second house makes a person see the family's destruction like some difficult things happening in the family they they have to see that um, and especially when the Rahu period comes up their whole family like it they kind of uh, feel that they're getting uh, split and uh, you know families people all the members of family face very hard time in their life especially when someone is running the uh, Rahu Mahadasha or Antardasha so they see those kind of things happening uh, within their family structure and uh, so again um, you know people with Rahu in the second house they also like come comes in uh, you know tussle and fights within their family members themselves 
and uh, they also hide the truth from their like as much as they feel that the family is not telling the truth about the treasure or something then at the same time they also like to hide uh, their the their own of uh, wealth from the family and uh, so now it also makes a person a little bit of selfish and uh, they they are not happy within their own like they are not satisfied even if they boast about it they might lie about their family uh, values and the family wealth they might say oh i come from a very rich uh, family background but they themselves within their own heart they are not at all satisfied and they are not they are very hap- unhappy uh, where in from their own birthplace where they are born because that's what rahu does it will it will only give you hard time about the house it is placed it will never make you feel satisfied about that house so and then uh, it again it can give you speech defects people can stammer and uh, it can give you throat problems because second house is also about throat and a uh, speech and all and uh, they don't usually take very friendly advice with people in the second house um mm, and then they talk sometimes they talk too much unpleasant and offensive words too because again speech in the second house and rahu it makes you think not not think you before you do anything um you just it just makes you do it just it will just keep on talking in your ears just do it do it nothing wrong about it but then it will make you do wrong stuff and uh, there are also like uh, second house also uh, talks about uh, the uh, speech uh, talk t it also uh, is uh, denotes teeth so sometimes you have teeth problem you might have to go to dentist over and over again with rahu in the second house and especially when you're running those uh, periods of rahu and now here rahu aspects the sixth house the fifth aspect of rahu with that it looks at the sixth house with seventh aspects it looks at the eighth house and with the 10 uh, with the ninth aspects rahu looks at the 10th th- house of your birth chart so what it does is like because of uh, like 180 degree axis of rahu and ketu so if rahu is placed in your second house uh, then ketu is placed in your eighth house so with that like it gives you a very kind of interest because rahu is aspecting the 8th house from the second house it gives you interest about the hidden knowledge because 8th house is all about hidden knowledge occult signs and occult and um, you know sudden events and transformative events of your life and uh, secretive things so here uh, rahu is like little curious about it but then because ketu is sitting in that house rahu usually doesn't care about much about secretive things it doesn't care about um the occult and all so people with this placement sometimes they are very like they're always in in challenge with the deciding whether they really are interested in uh, field of research or they are interested in um you know astrology is because it is also occult science right and are they are interested in people who do like psychic things and or uh, because what they have done is in their past life they have already done these things that's why ketu is posited in their 8th house so wherever ketu is placed uh those things people actually have done they are just like been there done that kind of thing so they feel that uh, i know about all this thing i'm not any more interested in all that stuff so with that uh, but at the same time if they want to pursue that they can be very good astrologers they can be very good healers they can go into the areas and fields of research and uh, you know because you know ketu here is sitting and is saying that i know all that already so it gives the empowerment to rahu because rahu wherever it looks it gets the empowerment from that house so that's what rahu does here and it makes uh, a person like having very like good psychic abilities at the same time now with this like if you have heard about the very famous indian astrologer and mathematician uh, mr b v raman he he had rahu in the second house he had that placement so then um with rahu sitting in the second house 
the sixth aspect let's talk about we have already talked about the eighth as uh, seventh aspect in the eighth house so what about fifth house aspect of rahu that is rahu is looking at the sixth house so with sixth house or sixth house is about uh, you know accidents it about deaths diseases enemies it's about your uh, problems and uh, you know your pets is are seen with the with sixth house your court cases litigations and diseases and chronic diseases are seen from the sixth house so with that what does rahu do is amplify those things but at the same times because rahu suppresses it takes advantage advantage out of the situation so what it does is like it it actually aggravates it amplifies your sometimes your court cases and litigation with your enemies it but at the same time he is very good at um, uh, defeating their enemies in the 6th house because rahu acts like himself acts like lawyer and uh, rahu is very good at uh, you know um, those things well diplomatic things and uh, how to deal with situations he's very street smart so from second when rahu is aspecting your sixth house so you are more powerful than your enemies your enemies usually uh, find it very hard to defeat you with the rahu in the second house and uh, with that now with uh, aspecting the uh, ninth house uh, sorry the 10th house uh, with their ninth aspect so with that what it does is rahu is makes you uh, reach very high positions in society in your business in your career they take you at a very high status um so people whoever have rahu in their 10th house either or aspecting the 10th house it amplifies those uh, the uh, the uh, agenda of that house so with rahu in second house when it aspects the 10th house it can give you very good career and, and it can take you to the highest positions uh, in your career um so these these are the things when we look at from rahu in the second house now um basically what does rahu do is like it wants to have whatever it has it is not satisfied with that so when rahu is aspecting the 10th house it can just like create circumstances where you have no choice then you keep then other than to keep keep going high and high and high up in the hierarchies of whatever you choose to do in life so let's you let's say you have you are working in a company and then suddenly what will happen is like the person who is higher um, higher than you in authority and hierarchy they will just leave the organization when your rahu period will kick in they will leave the organization and then you will be the one who will be chosen as um the boss and the senior position in that company so and otherwise otherwise also if you are doing any business and uh, it will take you like very very high position in your business and career so that's what uh, rahu does when it aspects the 10th house so i hope you like this video and this is the series it will continue and i'm going to be making the rahu in the third house um and that will be shown in my next video um in this series of rahu in all 12 houses so keep watching and if you like this video hit the like button and if you like it subscribe my channel and share with all your friends and family all right see you again bye now